perhaps some of them would end this Las Vegas based flight crew with a lot to welcome you to Las Vegas. Let's go to Vegas. We'll stay up all night. Let's go to Vegas, baby. Let's get away. Who wants to live forever when we can have a day? Honey, this is Vegas, so bring your credit card. Let's go to Vegas, baby. Let's go tonight. Let's go to Vegas. We'll stay up all night. Let's go to Vegas, baby. Let's get away. Who wants to live forever? Hey everyone, welcome back to Raising the Nuts. Obviously it's been quite a while since we've had a proper video on the channel due to the pandemic. Hopefully all of you out there are safe and happy and healthy. And I'm pretty happy to be back here uh, creating some poker content for you guys. Uh, as you saw in the intro, we just got back from Las Vegas, a trip to Las Vegas, to hang out with people from the DGF community, which, was, uh, which is a community that's founded around the Sessions podcast. Uh, if you've never listened to Sessions, I really recommend you guys give it a listen. It's my favorite poker content out there. It's a very unique story, and it's just well worth your time to listen to. It comes out five days a week, so go check that out wherever you can find and listen to podcasts. Before we get into what we're actually doing in today's video, which is a Play Every Hand challenge, just want to update you guys on a few things since it's been quite a while. Uh, Jody and I still have the podcast coming out every Wednesday. We talk about a bunch of different stuff, including parenting and poker and mental health, and just kind of it's just the, the following along of our story as it goes along. Uh, and like I said, it comes out every Wednesday at 5 a.m. Eastern time, so give that a listen. We also now have merchandise, uh, as you see here. We have merchandise available on Poker Rags. It's pokerrags.us. If you search under uh, podcast, you'll see a link to Raising the Nuts, and hopefully we'll get some other kinds of uh, shirts up there as well for the YouTube channel soon. Um, but hopefully you guys check that out. There's also some other great shirts there as well, other poker-related shirts. And uh, Check Race Charles also has his shirts up there as well. So it's pokerrags.us. All right, so for today's video, finally getting back to it, the last video that I did before Corona came was a Play Every Hand Challenge where I showed every single hand played from the Golden Nugget. We're doing the same thing again this time. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. The rules of the Play Every Hand Challenge are that I have to play every hand dealt in Preflop, unless there is a three bet or an all in before it gets to me. Uh, that didn't happen at all in this, so I actually did play every single hand. Um, I am allowed to limp in and fold, I just had to put money in the pot. Going into today's session, this is actually the 10th session. Hold on, let me pull up my notes here. This is the 10th session of the Play Every Hand Challenge. Going into today's session, I had lost five sessions and won four sessions, and was up a total of $649 going into today. So that gives you the stats on where we're at right now, and I, had, I decided to play over at the Flamingo. I, I need to pick locations that are a little bit off the beaten path. Uh, I want to find spots where I can get into the games and be able to limp in a lot or, or if I have to or don't have to put a lot of money in preflop. That's the ideal situation. So I went over to Flamingo. The games were eight max. It didn't take too long to get in. Obviously wearing a mask. There's plexiglass up. I felt pretty comfortable uh, playing there. So let's get into the action. It's a beautiful Saturday in Las Vegas and the room seems to be pretty busy for a small room. I buy in for $500 into the 1-2 game and keep in mind I'll be showing every single hand that I'm dealt in. I end up making a big bluff, a big call, and a big fold during this session so get ready for some good action. So first hand I'm dealt in is under the gun so I decided to just limp in with 9-8 offsuit because I don't have any idea of how the table is playing. A player limps behind me and when it gets to the small blind he makes it $18. I go ahead and call and the player behind me calls as well. The flop comes queen 10 4 with two hearts. The preflop raiser checks. I have a gut shot but decide to check. Player in late position bets $17. Preflop raiser calls and I decide to just get out of the way. I don't have a good hand to continue with so I just fold. In the big blind I'm dealt 9 3 offsuit. Folds to the player in late position he makes it $10. I just call. If it was later in the session, I would actually 3-bet, and I think 3-bet is actually the best play here. Avoid the rake and just win the pot preflop. I call. Flop comes 4-4-2 four, four, two with two hearts. I check. He bets $20, and I fold. I complete 9-4 suited from the small blind after a bunch of limpers. Flop comes jack-10-6 with two hearts, and I just check fold to a late position bet. My first situation to play aggressively comes up. Folds me on the button. I raise to $10 with eight deuce of hearts. The big blind defends. Flop comes king 3-3, three, three, two hearts. Good flop for me. Flop a flush draw. He checks. I bet $10. He quickly folds. It's still early in the session, but my initial impression of the table is that it's going to be pretty tight, and I'm going to be raising most of the pots. Uh, this is an easy raise, obviously, in the cutoff when it folds me with queen 10 offsuit. The player to my left makes the call, and we take the flop heads up. The flop is 8-8-6 rainbow, so pretty good flop for me. I bet $10 again, and he makes the call. He can have a lot of things, obviously, but should be able to win this pot on a later street. The turn's an offsuit three. I decide to slow down and check. 
and my opponent checks back. With him checking back, I'm just going to bet really big on pretty much all rivers and expect him to fold a fair amount. But the river is a 10, so I make a pair, so I go for a value bet of $15, and he quickly folds. I raised the $10 with ace-4 all suit, and everyone folds, so I win that one. Going for four in a row here, I raised the $10 with ace-9 off suit. The player on my left makes the call. We take the flop heads up. The flop comes jack-7-4 rainbow. I decide to check, and he checks back. The turn is a jack. I bet $5, figuring he's probably going to call with everything, and I'll just bet pretty big on the river, maybe get some pairs to fold, things like that. He does call. River's a six. I throw out $35, which in this game seems like a pretty big bet at the time, and he uh, snap folds, so he probably just had nothing. We might have had the best hand anyway. I'm not sure why, but I decided to limp a seven all suit on the gun here. I think I probably should just be raising given what's going on at this table, but we end up taking it multi-way. Flop comes queen 10 four, checks around, turns a king, and the small blind leads, and I fold. Okay, well now we have our first big pot of the day. It's also our feel player play of the day. You know, I'm a feel player. Just gotta do things sometimes. Already have a lot of turnover in this game. The player to my left is brand new, first hand at the table. He limps in under the gun, folds around to me in the big blind. I decide to raise it to $15 with king six of clubs. Not really sure why, but just went with it. Feel play, obviously. And he makes the call. Flop comes nine, four, two with two clubs. So flop a flush draw here. I lead for $15 and he raises it. He makes it $40. Uh, I have a couple different options. We're both $500 deep, but decide to call. The turn's an offsuit ace. I check and he bets $65. And now it's on me, I have a couple different decisions. I can either call here and try to make a flush on the river, but being out of position, that kind of sucks. I can just fold, but that's not very fun. Or I can do this. All in, what do you say? All in, all in, he said. Obviously it's nice to have a flush draw, but I, I was just kind of banking on the fact that I didn't think he'd have a hand that would call off on his first hand playing for $500. So just went with it, and now we have to sweat out whether he's going to fold or not. Pause the video here and let me know in the comments if you think it's going to get through. Everybody hold your breath with me. Whew, it got through. Nice. The adrenaline's rushing, so got to take it easy on this pot. Player who just sat uh, the hand before shuttles the button. I complete with five deuce off suit. We take it three ways to the flop. Comes king, jack, jack. Checks around. Turn six, checks around, and he bets, and then we all fold. Player on my right opens to $12. I have ace-jack offsuit on the button, three bet to $30. He makes the call, and he either said he was going to take it easy on me or thanks for taking it easy on me, one of those two things. I'm not sure what to make of that, but flop comes down 5-3-3. Three, three. Good flop for me. He checks. I bet $30 again. He calls really quickly, so I'm thinking he has a pair a lot of the time. Turns a jack. Great card, obviously, making top pair. He checks, I bet $50 again for value, expecting him to continue with all of his pairs. Sometimes he'll have like queens and kings here at, at in, in these one, two games, but can't be too concerned about that. River's an offsuit ace, so we make top two pair. And given the speed of his turn call and the way that he was looking on the river, I thought he was gonna call pretty much any size. So I decided about $120, he snap calls and our hand is good. Very next hand, same player to my right, limps. I raised the $15 with ace eight offsuit. Player on my left calls on the button and that other player who limped calls as well. Flop comes down nine, seven, five rainbow. He checks, I decided to check and the button checks. Turns a seven, we all check around again. And then the river's a six, so I make a straight. That player checks, I bet $20. The button folds and he snap calls again. I roll my hand over, he shows pocket twos and definitely seems a little frustrated. Middle position player opens the $10. I call with nine, six offsuit. We take the flop heads up. It comes down ace, 10, eight with two spades. He checks, I decide to check back. Turns a seven of spades, so we make a straight, but there are three spades on the board. When he checks, I decide to bet $20. I think he's gonna continue with if he has a spade in his hand or if he checked an ace on the flop or something. So, uh, but he doesn't have anything and he makes the fold. I limp behind a early position limper with four, three all suit. Player to my left limps and then the player to his left makes a big raise. When it folds back to me, I decide to just fold uh, because I did put in the money to limp and I'm allowed to just fold now. I check my option in a straddled pot with eight, seven offsuit where I was the straddler. Three ways we check it down on a four spade board. I make a pair of sevens and win the pot. There's a raise of $20 in late position and I call with eight, four offsuit from the big blind. The limper calls as well. Flop comes down nine, seven, three rainbow and we check fold to a bet of $40. Nine seat who's been pretty tight so far opens to $15. The one seat makes the call. I call with nine, eight offsuit from the small blind and we take the flop three ways. The flop is 10, six, two with two hearts. Checks to the player who raised preflop, he bets $20. Folds back to me, I have a backdoor flush draw and a gut shot, so I make the call. Turns a nine, so I make a pair, that's nice. I check and he checks. River's an offsuit six, so I decided to put out a little bet of $10, hopefully get paid off by worse hand. And he does call and mucks his hand after we showdown.
Playing the one seat limped in this hand. I limped behind with 6-4 all suit, kind of thinking he might be up to something. He was paying attention. It ended up being a multi-way limp pot, and he showed down ace-king that made a full house. I limped behind with six deuce of hearts, multi-way, flop comes ace-king-10, and check fold to a bet. You'll notice if it's fold as me, I'm opening pretty much any two cards, and I do here with jack deuce all suit, opening $10. Get a call from the button. Flop comes 8-7-3 with two spades, flopping me some ambitious backdoor draws. I decide to bet $15, and he quickly folds. 20 hands in so far, and I've won 11 of them, and I'm up about $350. Have to call a raise to $12 from the player on my right with seven deuce off suit. The board comes down ace, king, four, jack, three. We check it all the way. I decide not to bluff against him, and he shows down pocket nines for the win. I limp ace, deuce, off suit under the gun. Probably should just raise this one up at this table. Flop is queen, nine, five. We both check. Turn to six. He bets $10, and I just fold. I check my option in the big blind with queen, three, off suit, multi-wave pot. Flop comes queen, eight, five, rainbow. Checks around the button. He bets $7. I decide to just call. Turns a jack, check, check. River's an ace. I bet $15 for value. This is probably too thin in retrospect. Definitely too thin in retrospect with the way this table is playing. He calls with ace five and we lose. The button straddles. I complete king deuce off from the small blind. We take it three ways and check down a jack 10, seven, 10 ace board and my hand is good. After an early position limp, I raised to $15 with 10, eight off suit. The big blind's the only caller. Flop comes king jack six and he leads for 15 and I just decide to fold. Pick up a real poker hand that all you out there will actually play. It's pocket nines. I raise the $10. The button makes the call. Small blind calls as well. Comes jack three, two, all clubs. So not the best flop for me. We all check. The turn is the six of clubs, bringing four clubs on the board. Small blind checks. I check. The button bets $15. Small blind folds after quite a while. And I decide to call here. Obviously not great to call with four clubs on the board, but he could be bluffing. I could have the best hand. The river's a jack. I check and he quickly checks back. I turn my hand over, but he has 10-9 with the nine of clubs for the win. I pick up another premium, this time ace-king of diamonds. I raise to $10 and the small blind makes the call. The flop comes ace-queen-7 with two diamonds. That's top pair and the nut flush draw. Pretty big flop for my hand. He checks, I bet $10 and he calls. Turns the offsuit king, so we have top two pair with the nut flush draw now. He checks, I continue betting for value. I bet $25 and he calls once again. The river's an offsuit eight. When he checks, I'm gonna go for some value, hopefully get a call from some worst two pair type hands, and I bet $80. And he takes about two seconds and shelves all in for $270. What to do? I have top two pair here, obviously it was a great situation. What does he have when he check raises all in on the river? Most players at this level are only gonna have jack 10 here. Sometimes I guess they'll have some ace kings. Pause the video again here and let me know what you would do at home. I decided to fold. I think he's just going to have the nuts here the vast majority of the time. And uh, I'm okay with it. So I fold top two pair in a beautiful spot for, you know, about $200 more. I raise the $10 with ace deuce offsuit. The small blind and the big blind both call. The flop is ace jack eight with two diamonds. The big blind leads out for $15. He has only about $60 or $70 left. I decide to look over at the player in the small blind, see if he's interested. He seems really interested. And I end up actually just folding top pair here, thinking the play on the big blind had been pretty tight so far. So I just uh, gave him credit for a better hand than mine. And also knowing that small blind seemed like he was interested. They ended up showing down and the small blind actually had ace queen of hearts. This was the same player from the previous hand. Uh, and the big blind had led with queen jack and stacked off with it. Uh, so the ace queen of hearts ended up making backdoor flush and holding up. Okay, time to get back to winning ways. I limp queen nine offsuit under the gun. We take it five ways. Flop comes queen 6-2 with two clubs. I lead for the pot, $10. Player to my left calls. Think it's pretty likely I have the best hand. On the turn seven, I decide to keep betting. I bet $25 and he folds. When I'm in there playing every hand, it's really important for me to pay attention to how others perceive me or how I think they'll perceive me and who will fight back or who who is just not gonna pay attention and just let me run things over. I knew the player on my right was paying extra attention to how I was playing pretty aggressively and in every pot. So when I straddle and he completes and then I make it $20 and it gets back to him and he makes it 125 and I have pocket nines so I have an easy hand to continue with. We're looking for a good flop for our hand and we get it on 10-3-2 rainbow. He's already got this bet lined up. He pushes out $205. He's got about $200 behind. I decide to just call. The turns an offsuit queen. He's already got his jam lined up to go in there. I make the snap call. And you know it's a good sign when your opponent yells this. The river's an offsuit six. My opponent turns over ace jack and my nines are good. And my opponent says. 
he was a good sport about the hand and a nice guy. And I scoop in this over $1,000 pot, which was by far the biggest pot at the table so far. There's a limper, and I raise to $15 with ace nine of clubs. He calls. We're heads up. Flop is ace four two rainbow. Pretty dry flop, so I check, and he checks back. Turn is an ace, so I have trips. I bet $5. He calls pretty quickly. He's probably drawing dead. The river's a jack, so hopefully he made a pair here. I bet $30, and he folds. I call a raise to $7 with jack four all suit, and I fold to a $30 bet on ace nine six. I straddle the button and I have a6 offsuit. Decided to check my option when both players to my right limp in. And we just check it down on king, jack, 10, 8, 4 with three diamonds. The player to my right bets the river and we both fold. I get dealt the best hand in poker, seven deuce offsuit. I have to call a raise to $15. And then the player who limped in to my right makes it $215. So we have an easy fold now, I think. Back to getting dealt the crappy hands. I get ace queen offsuit, raise the $10, play on my left calls and the big blind calls. Flop comes 844, two spades. Big blind leads out for $15. I could call here sometimes. I decided to just fold. He doesn't have much left in his stack, and I lose that pot. I raise the $10 with king eight of diamonds. Everyone folds. I have a little policy where if I raise preflop and everyone folds in these games, then the dealer gets the $3. Call a raise to $15 from the player on my right with pocket fives. Flop comes jack seven four. He checks. I can bet here, but I kind of felt like he was trapping with something good. I decide to check back. The turn's an ace, he checks again. I check back again. River's a 10, he bets and I fold. I call a raise to $6 from the big blind with ace six offsuit. Flop comes 10, four, three, we both check. Turn's an offsuit nine and I check fold to a bet. I have terrible camera work and four deuce offsuit here. Button straddles I complete and I check fold on eight, six, four. I straddle the button with eight deuce of spades. The big blind is the only person who completes and he doesn't even look like he wants to call the five. So I make it $20. He thinks for a bit and calls. Flop is 10, 6, 3 with two clubs. He checks. I'm just going to bet everything here. He seems pretty risk averse. So I'm going to put a lot of pressure here on him. So I bet $20 and he makes the call. The turn's a 6. He checks. It's probably not the best card for me, but I just feel like he's probably going to fold way too much. He's got $220. So I'm going to make one bigger size bet here and then give up if he does call. So I bet $65. He asks how much it is and then quickly shows all in. I obviously have an easy fold. 40 hands in now, so time for a stat and stack update. Stats, I won 16 out of the 40 hands, so 16 wins, 24 losses, and I'm currently up about $700. I've had so many of these offsuit aces in this session. I raised the $10 with ace three offsuit, the big blind calls. Flop comes 10, eight, two, rainbow, he checks. I decided to check back. The turn's a 10, he checks. I bet $5, I probably have the best hand here a lot of time, and I can bluff some rivers if I need to, but the river's a queen, which I didn't like. So he checks, I check, and he wins with queen nine. I raise the $10 from the hijack with jack four offsuit. Both the cutoff and the button make the call. The flop comes ace jack eight with two diamonds. We all check. The turn is the seven of diamonds. I decide to lead for $15 for value and protection. Both players make the call, so I'm probably done with this hand. Rivers and offsuit ace. I check. The player to my left bets $50. The button makes the call. I fold. The player to my left had six four of diamonds for the flush. And the button had pocket queens, which he did not three bet preflop. I raised the $10 with king jack offsuit, and it's another raise and take it, which means I win $0, dealer wins $3. I raised the $10 with 10 six offsuit. The big blind actually folds because he says he wants the dealer to get the $3, so she gets the $3. Good. Thank you, Trevor. I played this next hand pretty weak, not sure why, but I straddled and I checked my option versus the undergum limper with a six of clubs. The flop came down king six three, we checked. Turns a seven, check, check, river's a jack, check, check, and I lose the jack 10 in the small pot. Player to my left straddles, I have four, five offsuit and complete. Flop comes king eight, two, and we check fold to a bet. The button straddles, I complete with 10, seven of spades. The big blind calls, now the button makes it $20 and we both call. The flop is jack nine, seven with two hearts and it checks around. The turn is a five. This is an interesting spot for me to lead, but I look to my left and the, the big blind seems pretty interested. So I end up just deciding to check. And when he bets $50, I just decide to fold given how passive everyone's been at this table. I have eight four off on my button straddle, just me and the small blind. And I fold to a bet on king jack five ace. I raise the $10 with king queen offsuit. The player on my left calls. If you haven't noticed, it's pretty much only myself, the player on my left and the player on my right that are playing pots at this table while everyone else just watches. The flop comes king eight six with two spades. I go ahead and bet $15 with my top pair second kicker and the button makes the call. The turn's an offsuit too, great card. Obviously just gonna keep betting for value. I think it's pretty likely I have the best hand. He either has a draw or a worse king. So I go ahead and bet $40 and he makes the call again. The river's an offsuit eight, not the best card, does pair the second card and he could have some pair plus flush draws on the flop. I can obviously get one more street of value from a worse king, 
But I also n am not sure how often he's going to have those hands when I block it. So I just go ahead and check and he checks back and I win. I went behind a couple of limpers with king three suited. We go six ways to flop. It comes ace, queen, jack, someone bets and I fold. This next hand's pretty interesting. The button straddles. I raised to $15 with ace, deuce of spades and two players to my left both call, including the button. The flop comes 10, eight, two with two spades. So bottom pair and a flush draw, pretty good flop for our hand. I go ahead and bet $15 and they both make the call. It turns an offsuit ace, so now we have top and bottom pair and a flush draw. I keep betting, I bet $30. The player in the middle folds and the player on the button makes it $60. So just a min raise, not really sure what to make of this. I decided to just call. The river's an offsuit eight, so not the best card in the deck because now I lose the hands like ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack that might have just called flop and then min raise turn, I guess. I also still lose the ace, 10, and ace, eight. I check. And the button bet's $100. I decided to just give it up. I don't think I can really beat too many hands. I could beat some bluffs like queen, jack, and hands like that. But given the way this table is playing, I don't think it's very likely that I ever had the best hand here. Maybe feeling a little rattled by the last hand. I opened a $10 dark. I looked down at 10-3 offsuit. Player to my left calls. Player in late position calls. And we take the flop three ways. The flop comes queen, jack, eight, all clubs. So I actually have the straight flush draw. I decided about $15, player in between folds, and the player in position calls. He only has about $70 left, and he's been pretty tight. The turns an offsuit ace, he basically jumps out of his seat. I decided to check, he shoves all in, and I just fold. I straddle under the gun and call a raise to $15 from late position with queen three offsuit, and I check fold on jack nine four with two clubs. I call a raise from the button with king eight offsuit. I'm in the big blind. We take the flop heads up. Great flop for me, it's eight three two with two diamonds. I check. He continuation bets for $15, I make the call. The turn is a nine, I check and he checks back. I probably have the best hand most of the time here. River's a 10, probably could go for some value here, but I decided to just check and show down and my hand is good. I call a raise to $15 with jack three all suit, multi-way, flop comes ace nine eight, all spades. That's not me, I check fold. I hope those of you that are out there that are really paying close attention are really enjoying all the different techniques that I'm using to fold. I got it all, I got the helicopter fold, the flip fold, the sideways fold everything. Uh, just hope that you're really appreciating this technique. I straddle the button and pick up king 10 of hearts. That's a good hand. Player on my right makes it $20 though. I make the call. Flop is eight, five, two, two clubs, nary a heart, not a heart to be seen anywhere. My opponent puts out a bunch of chips and I fold. Coming down the home stretch here, I raise in the cutoff with king queen offsuit to $10. The button makes the call. We take the flop heads up. Flop comes king jack seven rainbow. I bet $10 again. He makes the call. Turns a king. So I have trips now. That's a pretty good sign. I bet $20 and he calls again. That's also a good sign. Rivers an offsuit nine. So queen 10 does get there. I'm not too afraid of that. I think it's pretty likely that I'm going to get called by a worse hand here. So I bet $50. He thinks for quite a bit and then makes the call begrudgingly and I turn my hand over and it's good. I raise the $10 with pocket twos. Player on my left calls again. Flop jack nine five, we both check. Turns an eight, I check and he bets and I just quickly fold. There's a straddle on this hand. I raise the $15 with the 10 four of diamonds. Player on my left makes the call and we go heads up to the flop. Flop comes eight, eight, eight. So I flop trips, good flop for me. I bet $15 again and he makes the call pretty quickly. The turns a 10, so now we've improved to a full house. I bet $20. And he makes it $60. This guy's actually been really passive, really risk averse for the most part. Um, but I have a full house, so I don't think I can fold yet. Uh, so I go ahead and make the call. The river's a four, so we make another full house. Doesn't really matter, obviously. I check and he checks back and we beat ace three that he turned into a bluff. Thank you. I raised the $10 with the eight three of clubs. We go four ways to the flop. It comes jack 10, six. We all check around. The turn's a three, so I actually make a pair but player out of position leads pretty big and I decide to fold. I straddle and check my option with five, four offsuit. We take the flop 18 ways. Flop comes nine, seven, two, all checks around. Turn nine, I check fold to a bet. Sadly, these last few hands are boring. I complete the straddle with queen, five of clubs, three ways, comes seven, deuce, deuce, checks around, turn ace and I check fold. My last hand of the night is gonna come from the small blind because like any good pro knows, you always wanna pay through the blinds before you leave. I call a raise to $11. We go five ways to the flop. The flop comes queen 10 eight and it checks around. The turn to six, I make a pair, but I don't really wanna do anything on this board. So I check and fold to a bet and call it a session. Well, apparently I did wanna play one more hand. I guess I wanted to play my button. Didn't even realize it. Didn't know I had the hand, just found it here. I guess I had six, five offsuit looks like. Looks like I straddled the button. Looks like the big blind completed and we went three ways to the flop. Came six, four, three rainbow and I bet when it checked to me and they both folded and now I really called it a session.
my black stack of chicks for 25%. Let's go to Vegas, baby. Let's go tonight. Let's go tonight. Let's go to Vegas. We'll stay up all night. Let's go to Vegas, baby. Let's get away. I'm into the session for $500. I cash out for $1,070. That's a profit of $570. Total stats overall, I played 64 hands and I won 21 of them. And total stats now for the Play Every Hand Challenge. This is the 10th session I played and I'm now up $1,219. If you go to the playlist section of my YouTube page here, you'll see a playlist for the Play Every Hand Challenge. You can watch all the older videos there. And I'm happy to tell you that I will be releasing one Play Every Hand Challenge video each week, every Thursday. So you can look forward to that each and every Thursday. Additionally, we, Jody and I, do a live stream every Thursday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern here on the channel. We have a great group of people who come and hang out and just ask any questions. So hopefully you guys would join us and, and kind of join our growing community. Thanks as always for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like videos like this and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And feel free to leave a comment below and I will absolutely get back to you. See you guys next time. Let's go to Vegas, baby. Let's go tonight. Let's go tonight.